Well, you know, to answer that question, I really have to go back to a story that was spoken by the Lord to me when I when I first moved to New England. I was in this U-Haul truck, and as we were traveling up 84, I had this encounter, it was angelic encounters, and alongside both sides of the freeway, I, I saw these big angelic beings, and I heard the Lord say, these are awakening angels. At the end of that procession, there was another angel, a larger one whom I had seen on a couple of occasions before and who I'd never heard speak, but at this point he said, are you ready to do this thing? And I said, let's do it. And I knew he was speaking about the harvest and about awakening, and it was one of the most um, intense moments that I had experienced in several years. And I began praying and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And often when I ask the Lord those things, he, he tells me things that uh, I feel are unrepeatable. Because coming from a man, they sound arrogant. But, but if God were saying them, they aren't arrogant. They're just simply what he wants. And so I'd ask him this question. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, Danny, what I want isn't here yet and I know he was speaking about this period of time in history and and the church and and where he had wanted the church to be and he hadn't seen that and and it's one of those things where when we begin understanding that God wants us to have what he wants us to have not what we want to have it changes our whole perspective and so for him to say It's not here yet. I was like, wow. And inside I'm going, I I could never repeat that to anybody. I don't know how I could ever share that with anybody because, again, I'm just human and it sounds so arrogant, so haughty. Like I know something and I know I don't. So I asked him the same question a second time. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, I, I want you to redefine church. And I was like, okay. And he showed me an image of a cruise ship. And he said, this is the difficulty of that task I've given you. He said, redefine that. And it was like the Lord was giving me a metaphor of of, of, of the difficulty of, of trying to redefine something that everybody has imaged. And when you image a cruise ship, you think of this multi-level monster of a ship with thousands of people on it, and all kinds of things in it. There are restaurants, there's uh, places for games or swimming pools, there's all kinds of activities that can happen there and shows and everything else. And that's besides all the people. You have the bridge with all with the captain, and you have all the people, and, 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 and you think of this image of a cruise ship, and you recognize, uh, how do you redefine a cruise ship? How, how do you do that? And um, so he really didn't give me any answers. So I asked a third time, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I'm coming up to the exit where I am. I'm going to be moving. 2012, and I I recognize that I'm not getting the answers I need for what what I'm called to be up here for. I was given a commission to come up. I knew it was the Lord. And He said, "I want you to take over." And and the terminology and the way He said it, I. I recognized that he was speaking to someone who he was saying, I I want you to step in and engage, and I want you to basically time out on the way we've been doing things and begin to establish different things in the region. 
that would have greater impact and more impact and more significant impact and lengthier fruit. And I was kind of left with that. It would take me several years to even begin to come to the realization of what God was doing. And a few years later, he would speak to me on the day that the prophet Bob Jones passed away. He spoke to me and he said, get ready, it's coming hard and fast. And I knew there were indicators that what was about to come was going to come hard and fast that it was going to take people by surprise that some people wouldn't get it, they wouldn't understand what was happening, but God was about to shift some things. There's a lot more to that story, but brought us to 2020. There were words the Lord spoke to me at the end of 2019, speaking about this year, and he said, you need to look for the fourth man in the fire. There were things that he began indicating to me that were going to happen. He spoke to me about persecution coming to the shores of the United States. He, he spoke to me about several significant things. And, and in that, I was like, wow, what, what are we in for? And then that this COVID pandemic began and, and all of a sudden a whole church was withdrawn to a place where nobody really knew what to do and what we were supposed to do and how we were supposed to do it. And it, it was one of those things and you had people who were rebels, uh, rebels in, in the whole the whole situation. They didn't know, they, they were like, we're gonna just keep doing what we've always done. And the Lord had told me, he said, "It's what's coming? You won't be able to do the same way. One of my last conversations with Bob Jones was that the way, the way some have been doing church will never work in the coming days because it's not going to be about a show. It's going to be about the very presence of God. And it was during this time, the Lord said, it's time to finalize this book. And I began working on this book and the Lord pulled it together very quickly as I, as I began finishing up this book, re redefining church. It was one of those things that as he gave it to me, I, I realized that he was bringing me to a culmination of something that was about to occur right now and that he was in fact doing it, that he was in fact redefining his church, that, that uh, there was the simplicity of God is about to do something. He's about to restore something to the original intent that what God had intent, intentionally built when, when Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, that what he was saying, what he was saying was that there's a church that needs to look like the one I built and not like the one that men built. And so I've come to the place, I wrote the book, I put it out. It's very different than the church we've known over the past many decades. But it's a church that looks a lot more like the church that he wanted. And I want to do the church that he wanted. And I've made it my, my purpose, my vision for the rest of my days to pour into the church that Jesus wants. Not the one that has an emblem on it and a people who say this is where I belong but rather to a people who belong to the Lord, a people who will walk with the Lord, a people who will listen to the Lord. Because when Jesus builds his church, it is that church that no gates of hell could ever prevail against. That's the church I want to see built. I'm hoping everybody will buy Redefining Church. <laughs> it's on Amazon.